Hello again everyone, my name is Jim, thank you for joining me on this video. Today we are going to go over uh, the installation of Sophos XG Home Edition version 20. Uh, more specifically we're going to go over installing it on a XG appliance that uh, you can pick up fairly cost effectively second hand to give you a fully functioning next gen firewall for free for your home lab or for your training environment for whatever you would like um, so that you can learn how to use some of the features of a next gen firewall. We will have a quick look at the XGS136 which is Sophos's biggest small firewall and we'll quickly go over the differences with uh, TLS inspection turned on and off so that you can actually inspect all the encrypted traffic leaving your network where you require it and showing you the performance difference that a modern firewall has over a slightly older one and the performance impact that things like TLS inspection has. So let's have a look. Now, before we get started, uh, just a quick look at some of the options you do actually have should you want to acquire a Sophos appliance secondhand to run Sophos Home Edition on or any other application should you require. Um, this down the bottom here, this is a Sophos XG450. This is a Revision 2 model. Uh, you can tell that by the fact that the LCD is on the left hand side on these and is blue. Um, this has four one gig ports, two 10 gig SFP plus ports and a management port dedicated on it. But it also has two flex port bays that you can actually put expansion modules into. Inside is a uh, Xeon E3 generation CPU. Um, above that, we've got a pair of SGs. This is an SG230. This is an SG330. Um, these are the sorts of smaller end 1U form factor units. Um, the uh, 200 series generally is Pentium dual cores. The 300 series is generally Core i3, Core i5 CPU driven. Um, the later 300 series actually has a built-in pair of 10 gig ports. This one has them in the flex module. The 200 series is all gigabit, but again, I've put a flex module in that. And on top we have an XG135. This is what we will be using today because if you are after something that is both cost-effective power sensitive and enables you to use the license limits of the XG Home Edition license quite well, this is it. This is my recommendation. This is an XG135 Revision 3. And if I rotate it round for you guys, you'll see what we have in the way of ports on the back. So we have eight one gigabit LAN ports. We have a SFP port. We've got USB, COM port, whether that's via a COM cable or serial, uh, HDMI out so you can see what you're doing, and we have dual power inputs. We have an expansion bay on these. That is for a either a 4G card or a wireless card in this model. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot fit the 10 gig modules into these. They just don't fit, and it's a different connector internally. But these are my recommendations if you want to run something at home on a good, reasonably powerful appliance and a quick comparison of new versus old. On the top here, this is an XGS. This more specifically is an XGS 136. This is the most powerful of the small firewalls currently from Sophos in the uh, Sophos firewall range. Obviously here's the 135 below. As you can see, they pretty much are the same form factor in terms of size, but when we spin them round, round the back you can see there are some noticeable changes between the uh, XGS and the XG. Uh, we've still got the same expansion port, but on the XGS, this also now includes support for a 5G module in there instead of the 4G. We have a pair of two and a half gig PoE ports. Uh, on the right hand side, we have an additional pair of gigabit ports there. We have matching the XG, uh, eight gigabit ports in their collective bunch. Uh, we have two SFP ports on the XGS as against a single uh, SFP port on the XG. Uh, we have the same console, but we do not have the USB COM port that is on the front on the XGS. But we do not have any video out. Now, with this being based on a Ryzen and it uses a switching network chip rather than the uh, routing, basically, network card adapter that is in the XG, 
Unfortunately, as it stands currently, and it's February 2024, you cannot load the software edition of Sophos XG Home Edition on an XGS appliance. So if you see one of these come up secondhand, don't buy it yet. Uh, the architecture in these is significantly different to the XG appliances. So until Sophos release us a version of the XG Home Edition that we can load on there, we are a little bit stuffed, unfortunately. But we'll see what the future brings. Anyway, what I will now do is get on with showing you uh, the installation procedure for Sophos XG Home on the XG135, and this is a revision three. Um, I would suggest if you are looking for one of these, buy the revision three because it's the latest and last generation model for these. Um, the revision three is very easily noticeable by the fact that it has the SFP port and the HDMI socket. Uh, there are plenty of revision twos and revision ones. I wouldn't suggest doing that. If you don't need the peak throughput that uh, the 135 gets you, you can get away with the XG125 also. So let's go and uh, get the image and we'll get it burned onto a pen and then we will get it installed onto there. Okay, now we've had a look at the hardware. Uh, let's quickly get hold of the software we need to do this. Uh, if you follow the link down in the description below to the Sophos Free Firewall Home Edition page, it should hopefully take you to uh, this web page here. And you're going to click download now, fill the details in. And once you've filled in the details, it should take you to website giving you a link to download the ISO file. You need to download this file. And you will have to fill in a few more details because this is business software. Uh, you have to basically state that you're not using it in a country where they're not allowed to use it. And once you have downloaded the image, I would suggest getting the latest version of Rufus, which is currently 4.4. Uh, again, I'll put a link down to the Rufus download site below. Um, and you're going to want to select the image, find an appropriate USB pen to load the image onto. And when you click start, you'll be prompted by this message. Uh, if you write in DD image mode, that will make the system boot correctly. If you write in ISO mode, uh, there have been some issues with that. But write in DD image mode and go OK. And we'll let that burn on through. And I will meet you back over at the Sophos. Now, back over with the unit. I've already unscrewed it. But you're going to need to pop out all the screws from the bottom, apart from the uh, tool on the back. All the screws along the sides, both front and back, and that will allow you to, he says, pop off the lid. And we can have a quick look inside the XG135, because the chances are, unfortunately, due to how Sophos flashed the firmware on the SSD on these, you may need to replace the SSD. So I've already done it on this one because I've had this for a while and I've used it for a few things, but you will need to get yourselves an M.2 SATA. Um, but you can see there's not a great deal inside this. Uh, we've got heatsink over the Intel Atom. We have a four and a two gig stick of RAM, which gives this six gig of RAM, which is the upper limit of XG Home Edition. Uh, got a nice little fan if you want to swap that out for a quieter one. It's not particularly noisy anyway. Um, and obviously, as previously said, a uh, little M.2 SSD, which is what the system boots off of. Uh, if you try and uh, if you try and load Sophos XG Home Edition straight onto a hardware appliance without changing the hard disk, you will get a error reporting that you are trying to load the software image on a hardware device and it will not load. So there are ways that you can use the internal SSD people have found uh, using uh, certain commands in DD. I have never had any luck with doing it. Others have. But my recommendation is for the sake of the cost of a cheap SSD. It doesn't need to be massive in terms of capacity uh, 64 gig 128 gig more than adequate but there you go this is effectively the inside of a firewall and this is not much different to any other hardware appliance firewall that is an x86 based hardware appliance it will have 
a standard processor. This is obviously mounted in, obviously on the circuit board and is, is soldered in. The 200 and 300 series firewalls actually have changeable CPUs. They are just standard Intel CPUs in those and they can be upgraded should you feel like doing so. But for what we're looking at, this is absolutely fine. I'm going to put the lid back on, get it all plugged in, and then I'll just show you loading it up. And we will go from there. Now we are all plugged in, ready to go. Um, we have got, obviously, our power plugged in over here. We've got a HDMI cable plugged into a monitor. We've got the USB key that we've just burnt. Uh, we've got a keyboard plugged into the USB port. And what you will notice over on this side, I have two network cables plugged in. Uh, but they are not plugged into ports uh, 1 LAN and 2 WAN that uh, may seem like a sensible idea. Because we are loading the software image on this device, bizarrely, the port numbers flip sides. So ports 1 and 2 are actually labeled ports 5 and 6. So in port 6, I have an internet connection plugged in. And in port 5, I have the PC that we'll be programming this all up on plugged in. So... I am going to power this up and the light will go blue. There it is. And we shall look at the screen and see what's going on. And what you should get on boot up is the following. So you can see we have got, just adjust you guys slightly. Um, the Sophos firmware installer boots up. Uh, you can see actually that it has detected here. It says Sophos physical device detected, um, but once you've changed out the hard disk, uh, it will allow you to progress past this point. If you haven't, or you have still got the original hard disk and it has not been cleared correctly, uh, this will not work. And it will pause here and ask you to uh, load the hardware image instead. If you have that issue, um, my suggestion is swap the hard disk out for a new one. But once you have done that, it's as simple as pressing Y, hitting return, and away it goes. And that's us all installed. Now, if you do do this on a bigger unit, so a 200 or a 300 series, or even a 400 series, it will be playing you a pretty tune now. But uh, on these, it doesn't, sadly. So no pretty tune on this one. If you watch some of my older videos, you will hear the tune. But we'll go Y, and we will go rebooting. And we will let this reboot. And it will do the first run and boot up into a prompt. And we can then go and make sure that we can see the unit and configure the unit from a web browser. Now, once you've given the firewall a minute or so to boot, uh, it will give whichever device is plugged in to port one a DHCP address on the 172.16.16 address range. And you can see here I have 172.16.16.17, and you can see that my default gateway is .16. Uh, this is the standard address for all Sophos XGs. Doesn't matter which size or which model you use, as long as it's running SFOS version 20 or even version 19, 18, 17, this has been standard since the Cyber Rome days which was where Sophos purchased it from. So we can close down out of that. I am on my dedicated speed testing machine for this purpose because I can set this up and do some testing with this. But I'm going to open up a web browser, go to 172.16.16.16 on port 4444, making sure that you use HTTPS. And we shall proceed. And what we should be greeted with is a nice pretty wizard. which we are. Now, this is the version 20 wizard. Um, it's very, very similar, similar to the version 19 and the version 18 wizard. It's just got a nice, pretty look to it. So we will accept the software send user license and hit the start setup button where you can set your first and most important password. This is the main administrator account password. So set up a nice, safe, secure password. And you can leave the box tick that says install the latest firmware. Uh, if there is a firmware update out, it will bring the firewall up to date for you. Let's see what happens on this one. Um, if you are using this and you are already have a Sophos XG setup, you can 
restore a backup and you can connect this as a HA spare. So if you are or, or if you already have a Sophos firewall of the same size and the same model, you can set the secondary device up as a HA spare from the from the off. So we're going to go continue. And now we need to create a secure storage master key. This is the key uh, for the encryption for the internal hard disk. If you lose this um, uh, in a production environment, you may not be able to recover things off of your firewall in the event that you need to interrogate the hard disks. So make sure you keep this safe and secure. I'm not too fussed on this because I'll end up reloading. I've typed it in wrong. This is a password. One, two, three, four, exclamation mark. There we go. And you tick the boxes as I have stored the master key. You can, at this point, it will say, give your firewall a name. We'll call this XG. 135 and you can specify where in the world you are for the time zone and go continue now you should have received a license key from sophos at this point uh, check your email check your spam uh, you will paste that license key in here now if you are using a larger appliance that has more than four cores and more than eight uh, more than six gig of ram at this point uh, the appliance will restart uh, because it's limiting itself down to the core count of four and the memory count of six gig, because that is what the limitations of the Sophos home license is. Uh, it will then fire up the wizard again, and you will have to go through a couple of these steps again. I'm going to click, I do not wish to register now um, and start a trial for now, but because of the limitations on this, it's exactly the same. So, Basic setup is complete and you will get exactly the same uh, configuration and exactly the same bundles activated with the trial that you do with home. The differences with a home license is the expiration date over here. We'll sit there and say, uh, I think it's 31st of the 12th, $29.99. So it's not going to expire anytime soon. Um, don't have to opt into the customer experience program if you do not wish to do so. Uh, I'm going to because... Why not? Um, and we click next, or continue, I should say. You can now, if you wish, change the default IP address. So you can change which port you wish to use to be your main port for now. And you can set the firewall. You can have it in bridge mode. There's a few things you can tweak here. If this is the first time you've used this, I would recommend leaving these pretty default. You might want to change which subnet you are using. I'm going to leave it on default and I'm going to leave the DHCP range default because I'm not putting this in a production environment. You might be in terms of your home lab. So you may wish to change the settings there. You may wish to turn off DHCP. We'll go continue. Be aware if you have to use a PPPoE connection to connect to the internet, you cannot set that part up during this wizard. You will have to set that part up afterwards. Yeah. Network protection. Um, we can leave these unticked for now. If you wish to automatically enable some firewall rules, um, you can tick all these boxes. I generally leave them unticked personally, but that's up to you. And notifications and backup. This is to let you know if something's going on and where to send if you so wish. The configuration backup on a weekly basis. Here at email.co.uk. There at email.co.uk. And it will give you a configuration summary at the end. Now, if you do not have an internet connection available, you will not be able to activate the license straight away. As I said earlier, you will have to come back and set that up once this is finished. Uh, it's not a problem. We'll run through that once we get there. So on clicking finish, we will just let this run through. 
and uh, it will sort itself out, reboot the firewall if it needs to, and then hopefully bring us to the login screen. Now we are back on the login screen and you're going to log in admin and whichever password you set to log in with. And then we will be in and onto the dashboard itself. Now something you can do with the Sophos firewalls is connect them to Sophos Central. Uh, if you set up a trial account with Sophos for any of the products, you will gain access to Sophos Central and you can allow yourself access by linking the XG into Sophos Central. I won't cover that in this, but uh, it does allow you to cloud manage your firewall should you need to um, and to manage it like you would in a business environment where you can set policies for multiple firewalls, things like that. But just a quick overview of the dashboard. Um, down the left-hand side, we have all the sections which give you your settings. Uh, we have the system status, as it were, up towards the top left of the dashboard, giving you whether the system is overloaded, making sure all services are running, VPN is up, and all the interfaces are plugged in. Um, you can see here the status of your uh, any wireless access points you would have plugged in if you have any Sophos access points, uh, live users if you're using authentication, connected remote users if you have any in via VPN, and red tunnels if you have any remote Ethernet devices connected. Uh, you get a quick overview of the system, where the high availability is, and your uptime. And then you get your pretty graphs that tell you what's going on, what firewall rules are in use. Um, and over on the right hand side is where the uh, Sophos links into things like their security heartbeat and their synchronized service. Not something I need to cover in this uh, because a lot of this is not really relevant to home use. But if you are using this in a business, these are quite useful. First thing you will want to do, however, is to go into intrusion prevention, go into IPS policies and turn IPS on. And that will go off and update all of its signatures. Uh, the second thing is to go into active threat response and do the same thing. Turn on manage MDR feeds and you want to turn on XOPS threat feeds. This is part and parcel of it being a next gen firewall. It leverages the Sophos data lake to keep itself up to date for active threats and for zero day threats, things like that. So you can turn those on and that will download, uh, updates from Sophos for those. Um, my suggestion while you're getting started is to leave the action to be log only. You can change it to log and drop later on uh, once you're all up and running, but there may be some things that on certain networks uh, get flagged up as uh, advanced threats that need to be excluded. But again, it's all part of onboarding with a firewall that is pulling a lot of security information around. Uh, zero day protection, I think, should be on by default, which it is. Um, now, if you need internet access set up uh, and you do not have uh, a static IP or a DHCP IP for your internet connection, uh, on the left hand side, you go into network. And this brings up all your interfaces. Um, you can go into your current WAN interface. And you will see that actually you have the option here for PPPoE and you can change WAN2 or whichever WAN uh, ports that you do set up in the future. And you can put in your username and password details in there and any, if required, VLAN settings for the tag it as VDSL, but you can put in a VLAN tag should you require it. That will get you online and working. Now, the part that you will probably spend the most time in in any firewall are its rules and policies. So we will have a look at the rules and policies very, very quickly. By default, you should have three groups set up. You should have an auto added firewall policy for sending out via SMTP. This is so that the unit can send any notifications and backups out. Um, and you will have a default network policy. In the default network policy, it's a very simple uh, anything from the source 
LAN zone on any network is allowed access to anything on the WAN zone, any network. Uh, so there is no filtering applied by default. It just allows anything to go out on any port. Uh, this, over time, you will want to adjust, maybe create your own, but we'll use it for the time being just quickly. So options are uh, you can set up your web filtering policy. For now, we will put in allow all. Um, and we will scan HTTP for the time being. Uh, we'll engage zero day protection and we'll scan FTP for malware. You can block the Google Quick protocol if you so wish to do so. Um, you can set up all sorts of web policies in here. Uh, could set the default ones. There's no ads or explicit content. There's no webmail, online chat. There's some very uh, business orientated policies in there by default, but they're useful to have. Underneath that, we have synchronized security heartbeat. This, if you are using this in a business environment, is one of the uh, synchronized security features. Very good if you want to maintain a good security posture, but not a lot of good for a home user if you're not using the Sophos endpoint. Um, further on down, we get into more of the next generation features. So we have application control, um, allowing you to specify groups of applications effectively, whether you want to block applications by pre-categorized risks, you can create your own if you so wish. So if I put allow all for the time being, you can apply any traffic shaping you so wish, any DSCP marking, and you can turn IPS on for that specific firewall rule. I'll put it on LAN to WAN general, and we shall save that configuration. Now, one of the key aspects of a next generation firewall is its ability to interrogate pretty much all the traffic that goes through it. So one of the things that is worth looking at if you are interested in cybersecurity for businesses is the ability to inspect encrypted traffic that's leaving the network. Now, this is, may include traffic that is generated by servers, by endpoints, printers, even networking devices all over the place. The vast majority of traffic that leaves a network now through the gateway is encrypted. And being able to see what traffic is leaving the network is vital in uh, a security environment. Um, on the Sophos firewall range, this is done uh, primarily using the DPI system and is controlled using the SSL TLS inspection rules. Now, by default, it's not inspecting any traffic. So what I will do, uh, we'll set up a rule in a minute and import the certificate. I'll show you how to do that. But first things first, I have a internal speed test server here. So I will do a speed test to that quickly. Now I run a local internal speed test server uh, that uses uh, Let's Encrypt and everything to make sure that we have a valid HTTPS certificate. Um, and this allows us to actually do some testing of the SSL inspection and the impact that it does have uh, on networks and why you often see very large firewall appliances in networks that need to do a lot of packet inspection. Uh, so if I start, we can see that we get gigabit throughput on this device with just HTTP inspection turned on um, IPS turned on and uh, application inspection turned on. So we get a good throughput. Now, TLS inspection, which is man in the middle inspecting, uh, requires that you have an SSL certificate from whichever device is doing the inspection on your machine. That way, the device trusts the firewall that is doing the inspection and you don't get a lot of certificate errors. One of the key factors of TLS inspection and one of the key reasons that we like using the Sophos XG appliances is uh, a lot of systems nowadays use pinned SSL certificates. That means that they will only work if they get the right certificate back. And this in the past with SSL inspection has been a source of problems getting systems to work correctly with PIN certificates. Uh, the Sophos system makes that easy because you can 
literally go in and see which websites are failing to connect and enable them to be bypassed so long as you trust them. So what I will now do is go into certificates on here. We are going to go to certificate authorities. We are going to download the CA certificate for this device. And we are going to go into Microsoft Management Console because this is a Windows machine. This will be different depending on what machines you are using. I'm going to go into certificates, computer account. If you were doing this on a network with Active Directory, you would just push this out via group policy. Um, but if you want to do this locally, we will go to certificates, trusted root certificate authorities, and we will import the certificate we've just downloaded. Uh, it will not show up because it's a PEM, so you have to go to all files, security appliance, go next. And that is the certificate imported. We can see oh, there it is there. We can close that. And then we'll go back to our rules and policies, SSL TLS inspection, and we will go add. And we will create a test rule for the time being. And the rule position will be at the top. Now, we have some actions. This allows you to uh, specify if you wish to decrypt everything, decrypt certain sites, don't decrypt certain sites, or just plain deny. So we're going to go decrypt, and then we have a profile. So this allows us to, again, gain a little bit of flexibility and prevent end users from having lots and lots of issues sometimes. Uh, I'm going to go for maximum compatibility. We do have block insecure SSL, which will stop older SSL certificates working, um, and strict compliance, which will block any SSL certificate that does not meet exacting requirements and again you can create your own decryption profile as you see fit the source zone will be the lan uh, any network any user the destination zone will be the wan you can ssl inspect between vlans between anything any form of network where you might think there is encrypted traffic going on you can inspect uh, you can specify source de network destination network you can specify which services you want to intercept we're going to intercept any service leaving the firewall because that means you see everything that leaves the firewall obviously once you've set your firewall rules up to specify what you allow out whether that's limited to just http https traffic uh, is up to you but for this test we'll just do it this way um, and you can specify categories of websites should you require that and we'll go save and that is now HTTPS TLS 1.3 inspection turned on. Now, with SSL inspection turned on, if I check the certificate that is in use by this site, you will see that it is now being intercepted by the firewall. With locally hosted versions of OpenSpeed Test, you can put some additional variables in to help stress test things. So if you are running a local speed test server using open speed test and you are unaware of this, if you put a slash question mark S equals at the end of it, you can then specify L M H for low, medium, high, and there's many other variables available. So I will leave this on medium for now. And if I hit start, you will see that already it's noticeably slower. So we're not up into the 900 straight away. We are floating around and you can see because we've put a stress test level on, it's taking a lot longer. If you do this on high, you can actually specify a 24 hour speed test. If you really want to stress test like a firewall, things like that on throughput, you can really put some load using this. If we go back to the firewall and we look at, for example, up here under performance, and we go to CPU and memory. What we will see is that the CPU currently is probably somewhere around full load. There we go. 
So you can see as it's been doing stuff, you can see here, the CPU is currently at 100% load. That is because it is dedicating all of its processor to decrypting traffic at the moment. And it does have an impact. So this appliance can decrypt at around 850 megabits a second uh, in terms of download. Upload speeds, however, if I go and stop this running a second and let it run through as it switches over to upload. Previously, uploading and downloading at about the same speed. But with TLS inspection, you can see we are uploading at a significantly slower rate. And again, this will be where the processor is having to put some additional workload in to actually decrypt the traffic going out of your network. So it's something worth bearing in mind that TLS decryption, whilst being a very, very useful and very, very good security feature, generates additional load. You can see there we've got 815 down, 170 up. Obviously, if you put a bigger appliance behind it, you can decrypt more at a faster rate. But that gets you up and running with a Sophos XG135 appliance um, and gets you full TLS inspection on your end user network, basically. Uh, allows you to scan everything. You can use this for home labs, etc., to at least get an idea of what is expected in a business environment. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and swap the XG135 out for the XGS136, and we will see what difference that makes in terms of actual TLS throughput, because it's a newer device and is using a proper hardware image rather than a home license. Now we're doing the same medium strength stress test on the XGS136, and we're already holding a just a consistent higher speed, which is expected because this is a newer appliance. Um, if we go into the appliance, uh, you can see that we are using uh, a lot lower CPU usage. So we're averaging around 70% uh, usage rather than 100%, which means that there is overhead to enable this appliance to do more. Um, but generally, because it's a newer hardware appliance, it will be able to process more TLS sessions at a time than the uh, XG136, uh, 135, sorry, can. But if I go back to the main control panel, you will see that even though this is a hardware appliance, the interface is, is exactly the same. It's just the correct hardware image. So it's ever so slightly more optimized as well. And finally, this is the XG135 in watts at idle. So it uses about 22 watts when it's sat doing not a lot. And under full load, we are at uh, 26 watts. So that's using all the processor. So there we go. Now, hopefully this has been uh, useful to uh, you guys and girls out there. Um, the Sophos XG Home Edition, as far as I am aware, and if I'm wrong, please feel free to correct me down the bottom in the comments, is the only free next-gen firewall available currently. Um, Untangled has obviously vanished now in terms of its free tier. Um, uh, PFSense, OpenSense, unfortunately, don't have all the abilities uh, as standard to be classed as a next-gen firewall. Uh, there are some things you can bolt into them, but it doesn't bring them up to the level to be classed as a full next-gen firewall. Um, and everything else like uh, FortiGate, Palo Alto, whilst you can get certain trials, there's no free-for-home-use version of those, which is such a shame, because being able to use appliances like that in a home lab environment to be able to test be able to learn and to be able to experiment with them uh, I think is essential nowadays so it's a shame that that those companies do not offer something that Sophos does obviously version 20 is Sophos's latest version as it stands um, I will keep up to date as to where that is going with version 21 
appearing at some point in the next year or so. But hopefully this has been useful. Anyone who has any questions about this, uh, feel free to comment below. Also feel free to come and join us over in the Discord, links in the description and things like that, um, where there are other things going on. Um, you'll find me obviously on here, you'll find me on other social media platforms as well. But uh, thank you ever so much for watching. Uh, please drop us a like, feel free to subscribe if it's been useful to you, and I will see you in the next one.